Hello everybody, Stilovsky here, and I have recently realized there is no guide on YouTube on how to plan your build correctly in the efficient way. So I guess that would be a good idea to cover this topic. We are currently on the EIP Gaming website. They have a build planner for Elden Ring here, which is technically one of the best ones currently available. And yeah, today I'm gonna try to do a strength build, a classical strength build. I want to use it in duels. So the first thing that I want to do is to choose which is going to be my level cap. The dwelling meta is technically level 125 most of the tournaments and overall PvP related events does happen on level 125. However, it is not the level that most of people finishing the game at. So for the sake of that, we are going to go a little bit higher. We're gonna go 137 or 38. Because essentially on that level, you can connect with both 125s and 150s. Whereas 150 is the most common level that people actually finishing the game of. Firstly, we want to type in the field stats. In that case, it is going to be 60 Vigor, as this is the most optimal value for the sake of PvP. We're gonna type in 30 Endurance, 60 Strength, as it is a Strength build. And the rest, uh, we are simply going to leave out, as we do not really need these stats. These are not the main stats. And that puts us on level 115, which means we have 22, 23 levels left to arrange. Now we want to put in things that actually never change. So on the talisman slot number 3 and 4, I am going to put the Earth Tree's Favor plus 2. Because this is a talisman that I am never going to swap off or anything like that, it's just going to stay here. And the other one is going to be Great Char's Arsenal as well. It is strength build, so we are going to use the heavy weapons. The most efficient weapon for the strength build at the given moment, or well, at least one of the most efficient one, is the Colossal Sword called Great Sword. And this weapon has the requirements of 31 strength, which we actually feel here, and 12 dexterity. So let's pump up this dexterity. We are on 118 level overall. And uh, here, let me quickly change the max upgrade and the infusion for the great sword, uh, which uh, overall gives us the current AR 738. Doesn't sound bad. In fact, like. It is very, very, very good. Now, I would probably want to have some offhand weapon that I have like a quick access to. Maybe even for the sake of just, you know, to uh, quickly get rid of opponents that have low amount of the poise. For the sake of that, trusting swords are definitely the best. The, the small curiosity for you here is that the offhand trusting swords, in fact, attack faster than the main hand ones. So, for the sake of that, the clean rod is probably the best option. Not only because it has the highest range out of all the thrusting swords, but also because it has very good scaling on the heavy. As we can see, it has the requirement of 13 dexterity, so we are pumping this up. 119 for us at the given moment. Now, what? We essentially have like a fundamentals for the build. The next thing that I want to definitely fill up is our fashion or just equipment. And you can go essentially with whatever you want if you want to make the pretty fashion, sure thing. I am going for the optimal setup. Let's go with the veteran armor. As veteran armor is overall the most poise efficient, let's call it that way. And now for the rest, I am going to go with the Lionels. The reason for that is because Lionel's set has very good uh, robustness, which is a stat that increases your resistances against bleed. And bleed is a problem in this game for the obvious reasons. So, this is definitely a good idea to have a lot of that stat. If you want to find out which particular armor pieces are the most efficient against particular status effects and so on, there is uh, that uh, resource tab on Dongarino's Discord, link in the description. We can go here 
on the website of the negator and he has that tab armor here so essentially i can choose body parts for an example and see which of the armors have the best uh, poise to weight ratio here you go because of that i know that veteran's armor is absolutely best now i want to see the resistances against bleed i'm going to the robustness 99 is lionel's armor let's see the headpiece it seems like mushroom is the best and there is overall a few other ones that are a little bit better than lionel's uh, but uh, they do not have that much poise and i still want to have as much poise as possible so the obvious choice in that case is lionel's on the arms it is also lionel's on the leg it is also lionel's coming back to our build now i want to fill up the rest of the talismans and i want to do it in the way that i want to put the heaviest talismans that i'm gonna be using because based on that i can swap off to the lighter talismans and essentially still maintain the mid roll this is our goal so in that particular case it is good idea to use any sort of the outside resource to determine which talismans are the heaviest for the sake of that i am going to use the fantastic website of extra life absolute 10 out of 10 especially if you're looking for the misinformation that being said uh, plenty of information on the website is actually good and it seems like their uh, talisman tab is actually one of these so the talismans that i want potentially to use is definitely a spear talisman it is without a doubt hp plus two it is definitely a ritual shield talisman and so on which by the way i'm going to put here for a moment because uh, it is worth to mention that Teams on Amber Medallion plus two and Ritual Shield Talisman are the best talismans to start the duels with. As essentially you can just swap off these talismans and uh, get the advantage of the additional uh, defenses that you get when you have 100% of the HP. And essentially swapping off the HP talisman uh, gives you only that uh, bonus of negating that 150 something HP uh, that you get uh, as the additional one when you're starting the fight so it's pretty much a good setup to swap off back to the talismans besides spear talisman besides uh, bull goat uh, i am pretty sure i definitely want to use the blue feathered and it seems to be one of the uh, heaviest options over here um, i might actually use the red feathered as well maybe i could even use both of these in particular situations so let's go with that we are going to put red feathered and blue feathered in the slots which uh, puts us on the equip load of 80.7 and it is essentially a heavy load so we have the uh, fat roll because of that we have to pump up the endurance and we are currently at 40 yeah and it seems like 40 is the ammo that we have to go for as this is essentially our heaviest setup that we potentially would go with it put us on the level 129 and now we can think of the rest so are there any sort of the weapons that i want to potentially use well when i think about it it probably would be a nice thing to have knight rider's glaive seems like we actually have enough stats for that one what else we can put on the build it is probably going to be omen's cleaver oh here like the requirements of the dexterity is 16 uh what else probably some sort of the godskin stitcher as i want to have a good engaging weapon and that one has the requirements of 17 for dexterity so we are pumping that one up uh is there like something more that i want to use maybe i would like to swap to the earth tree great shield for the sake of to bounce off the spells earth tree great shields oh and that one has the requirement of 12 faith however there is one thing though when it comes to the amount of the faith that i have here i can just essentially swap off one of the talismans with the faith one for the sake to get plus five and then if i would start as the hero starting class i essentially would have enough uh, faith points uh, for the sake of to uh, simply still use the shield 
even though I do not have enough of the base stats because the talisman gives you plus 5 faith, yeah? But let's pump it up for now. And we are essentially on 137. Let's say that this is exactly the level that I want to stay at. So hey, the build is pretty much ready, you could say, but let's change... Uh, the starting class, the Vagabond, as that one is simply technically better for the sake of melee builds like dex builds and strength builds. Let's swap it. Oh, and turns out we actually have one free point to spare. But, to be honest, 60 strength is not even exactly the ammo that uh, I have to go with. Because, in fact, if you are going to look into the another resource, for the sake of that, let's check out the Elden Ring stats spreadsheet by Hellservant23 and his friends. As we can see over here, there is like uh, the display of Delta for the Heavy Katana Plus 25 with the A scaling. It's essentially going to tell us more or less how the Delta of the attributes change uh, within uh, particular thresholds. And when we are actually following things from the beginning, it turns out like up to uh, plus 14, uh, the gains are insane. It's uh, getting uh, worse later on. And we are looking at the 200 Delta uh, because essentially the way how the 200 uh, works like your scaling goes up by 1.5. So when you're going for the strength build, you kind of want to to hunt your weapons. This is essentially a fundamental thing about strength builds. But yeah, let's go lower, let's go lower, and then we can see that here we have that gains of 5, 3, 5, 3, 6, 3, 5, 3, and so on. And here at the 53, we have our first two, and then four. So essentially 52 is the moment when you have a drop in the delta apparently. It seems like if you are going to follow further, it turns out, yeah, indeed, we are gaining less a year per every another level up in the attribute. But it seems like 54 is actually a sweet spot. So I guess this is exactly uh, the attribute level that we want to end up at at the very least, and uh, there is uh, not much of the reason to go further. Uh, the situation looks a little bit different for the Delta of 100, as uh, here uh, you essentially scale pretty well up to attribute level 80. So let's get back, and we technically can lower that strength to 54, uh, which uh, gives us essentially the optimal uh, statistic uh, volume. That being said, let me remove all these weapons that I am not going to use at the same time with the great sword. As essentially those are weapons that I'm going to be hard swapping to. And uh, let's think a little bit. All right, so I have level 130 and I have like seven levels to spare. Now the question is, do I need something more? Am I absolutely sure this is exactly everything uh, that I need? Or maybe... Maybe I could, for example, utilize something against laggards. So the best way to deal with people that you have high latency to is to potentially use some sort of the status effects. So hey, what would be good? Sleep swords probably could be pretty good. Now let's see, the sleep swords are the sword of Saint Trina. We need two of them, but like we have that stat requirement of, as we can see, 14 intelligence. This is something that we are lacking. But yet again, this ammo might be obtained by swapping your talisman. Let me remind myself how it was called. It is a stargazer. Okay, let's go. And now we have the optimal ammo because of the plus five uh, on the intelligence. If you are going to see someone that is lagging, you probably going to have enough time to swap the talismans as well. So to be absolutely fair, I do not see a reason uh, to put these five points into the intelligence i could invest them elsewhere instead that's 12 faith instead of nine we could technically do the same with the talisman yeah but i want to menu swap to the earth tree great shield when i'm gonna be seeing people that are spamming me with the magic so essentially for the sake of that it is probably better and more optimal to have that three additional points into faith uh, for the sake of to simply uh, do not swap too much in the hidden situation as essentially 
people that cast the magic usually spam a lot of it, as magic in this game is overall very spammable. On top of that, having more than 10 faith gives you access to spells like magic fortification or divine fortification, which are essentially a huge boost to the defenses against particular elements, which is nice, I guess. So we are going to keep it at 12. So what else? Well, technically we can look for different weapons like Nagakiba, for example. That one has the requirement of dexterity of 22, so we could go with that. But to be honest, I do not plan to use Nagakiba, so let's go back to 17. And now it is up to my preference which stat I'm essentially going to fill, because I pretty much met all the requirements. So I guess in my case, even though it's not exactly optimal, I can just go with these uh, strike points and just go up to 61. It's gonna give me a minimal amount of the additional damage while handling the weapon and uh, overall uh, solid 20 air more on 100 versions of the weapon. So, hey, this is what we're gonna go with. And this is essentially a build that uh, we have planned for. And the rest is just up to you to just go into the game and uh, craft it. If you are a legit type of player that goes through the whole game for the sake of to finish off the build, uh, this method of uh, planning for the build is very, very good because it just saves you a lot of the disappointment after 20 hours of the gameplay or even more for the sake of so you would finish the game. If you cannot bother with incompetence of From Software when it comes to safeness of their games, well, even if you are using some sort of the cheat engine or uh, Mega Mules and so on, it is uh, still a very efficient way to pre-plan your build and uh, essentially uh, avoid the waste of time of the actual uh, testing uh, on the living on organism it's like there is really no point you can um, assume most of things regarding your build uh, of the simple pre-planning and having the access to the proper tools uh, yet again link in the description to the discord of dongarinos where you have that resources tab and here you can actually uh, find plenty of usable resources uh, especially the motion values, it's absolutely phenomenal uh, spreadsheet where you have all the information about motion values of the particular weapons, which is, by the way, the real damage uh, that you are going to deal when you are not going to include the defenses. So overall, it is really worth to look into all of that uh, and just simply plan your builds accordingly and use your brain instead of going like completely blindly into the game with the idea oh today i'm going to make this build based on that weapon and then that particular build turns out to be absolute fucking catastrophe and you basically wasted 30 hours of your life so yeah thank you a lot for watching and i will see you in the next videos